So now we can look at some Lewis structures. So when you're making a Lewis structure, you're looking at all the atoms involved in the, in the molecule and then trying to figure out where the electrons go. Are they bonding electrons or are they dots? Are they non-bonding electrons? And there's a very systematic way to figure out what the Lewis structure is. And this is going to be important for chapter 9, because after we draw the Lewis structures, then we'll be able to figure out what is the shape of the molecule, what does that really look like. And we're going to keep building on this. So this piece is really kind of fundamental for uh, chapter 9 as well. So well, the first thing you want to do is be able to add up the number of valence electrons. So if you think about hydrogen, hydrogen has one valence electron. So if I have two hydrogen atoms, I have two valence electrons. And so I have two valence electrons. If I have, um, if I have one bond here between them, each one of these uh, lines, each line represents two electrons. So there's two electrons in there. So I only need one bond for hydrogen. For chlorine, chlorine, each chlorine has seven valence electrons. And since I have two chlorines there, I have 14 valence electrons total. And again, if, you, if you're confused about valence electrons, go back to your periodic table. Hydrogen had one, and then chlorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So since I have two chlorines, I have 14 electrons total. So I have a single um, bond here. That single bond means I have two electrons in there. There's two electrons in there. And then I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve around uh, around the chlorine, so that gives me a total of 14 electrons. So all I'm going to do here is try to all I'm going to do is try to figure out how many valence electrons do I have in any molecule, and then um, make some sing connect all the atoms with single lines representing two electrons in each bond, and then add some electrons. So let's take PCl3. So we want to, first thing you want to do is figure out how many valence electrons you have. Phosphorus has five valence electrons, and each chlorine has seven, and I have three chlorines, so that gives me 21 plus five, which gives me 26 electrons. So again, going back to your, you should have a periodic table out in front of you, like at all times when you're doing these notes. So phosphorus is over here. I have one, two, three, four, five valence electrons, and then chlorine has seven, which we already talked about. So that's our total number of valence electrons, 26. Now if I had an ion, if I had a cation or an anion, I'm going to have to add or subtract electrons depending on what the charge is. So if it's an anion, that means it's negative. That means I gained an electron, so I'll add an electron for every charge I have. If it's a cation, that means I lost an electron. It's positive. I lost an electron. I'm going to subtract an electron from this total number. Now it doesn't matter where these electrons came from. Now I have 26 electrons, and I'm going to try to figure out where they go on this PCl3 molecule. So the way you want to figure this out is you put the central atom, that's the, the least electronegative one that isn't hydrogen. Hydrogen never goes in the middle. Hydrogen only wants to form one bond. We'll talk about him later when we talk about exceptions to the octet rule. So phosphorus, another way to think about it is if you look at PCl3, you have one phosphorus, you have three chlorines. So put the phosphorus in, in the middle and put the chlorines around the ends. And I have 26 electrons to start off with. Oops. I have 26 electrons to start off with. And I used up uh, two here, two here, and two there. So I, I used up six electrons in bonds. So I want to keep track of where all my electrons are. So I have 20 electrons left. So the first thing you do is you connect everybody with single bonds. I have 20 electrons left. I used up six in these bonds because there's two in each line. And then I'm going to fill up the octets of the outer atoms because they're more electronegative. So the electrons are going to be attracted to them first. So I, I have... I had 26 electrons, I used up 6 in bonds, I have 20 left over. Now I'm going to put, I need, everybody needs to have 8 electrons. Since chlorine has one line next to it, that means it already has 2 electrons, so it just needs 6 more. So I have 2, 4, 6, it already has 2 there. Now this chlorine also needs 2, 4, 6, because he wants to get to 8. He already has 2. Each one of those lines represents 2 electrons. 2, 4, 6. So I just used up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 electrons. That means I have two electrons left over. And if I have leftover electrons, I'm going to put them on the center atom. And now I'm all out of electrons. So I used, should have used up all 26 of my electrons here. So I had the six in the bonds, and then I used up 18 around the chlorines, and I had two left over to put on the phosphorus. And so each atom should have eight electrons around it. And you can go back and check. I have two here for this chlorine. 2, 4, 6, 8, and this chlorine has 2, 4, 6, 8, and this chlorine has 2, 4, 6, 8. 
and this phosphorus has two, four, six, eight. So if you feel like you're double counting the lines, you are, because they're sharing the electrons. So even though there's only two electrons there, they help satisfy this phosphorus octet, and they also satisfy each of the, the chlorine's octets. Now, if you run out of electrons before the central atom has an octet, then you have to form multiple bonds. So let's try one of those. They're a little bit trickier. So if you have something like HCN. So if I give you three elements like that, just put them in that order when you're connecting their bonds, H, C, then N. If you flip that around and do H, N, C, that's a different compound. So let's count up our number of valence electrons. Hydrogen has one, carbon has four, and nitrogen has five. And again, this is really important, so make sure you understand how to get the number of valence electrons, because if you get that wrong, everything's wrong. So hydrogen has one, and carbon is right here. So it has one, two, three, four, and nitrogen has five. That's one, two, three, four, five. So then we want to add all those up, and that gives us 10 electrons, 10 valence electrons. We have 10 electrons. Okay, when we add all those up. How many did I just use up? In the bonds, I used up two, four. So I have six electrons left. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them around the, the um, outermost atom. So I have two, four, six. Uh-oh, I ran out of electrons. And why did I say uh-oh? Because carbon's not happy. Hydrogen's happy. Hydrogen's an exception to the octet rule. Hydrogen just wants to look like helium. So think about where hydrogen is. Hydrogen's here. He can't have eight electrons around him. He's too small. He's happy just looking like helium. Helium has two electrons, so hydrogen's an exception to the octet rule. So hydrogen's happy here, but carbon. Carbon wants to have eight electrons around it, but it only has two, four. And so what's going to happen now? I can't just put two more. I can't just add more electrons. I don't have any more. I ran out of them. So now they have to share. So instead of these lone pairs being around nitrogen all by itself, I'm going to turn those into a line so I can double count them. I can count them for carbon's octet, but then they'll still count for nitrogen's. And I'm going to have to do that twice. So what happens is I get H, C with one, two, triple bond, N, and I still have lone pairs over there. So now they're sharing them. So I still only have two, four, six, eight, ten electrons total, but this nitrogen now has two, four, six, eight, and this carbon has two, four, six, eight, and this hydrogen has two, which he's happy with. And so that's how I can draw the Lewis structure for HCN. So only form multiple bonds if you have to, if you run out of electrons. So we got to this point up here and we ran out of electrons. We realized carbon wasn't happy. He needs to have more electrons. So we shared them with the nitrogen instead.